Blaring Out show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today we're backstage at Cornerstone Fest at Irvine Lake in beautiful, sunny California. And we're here with Spencer Chamberlain, lead vocalist of Under Oath. How are you doing today, Spencer? I'm doing wonderful, man. Good, now now tell me, what is important about the Cornerstone Festival f after all these years? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a festival, I, I feel, for everyone. You know, it's it's got spiritual backing, for sure. Um, I feel like a lot of kids that maybe aren't allowed to go to regular shows can come here. You know, non-believers can come here. Everyone's welcome here. It's it's a pretty cool thing. You see a lot of families here, a lot of little kids here. Um, it's been pretty cool the last couple of years. I'm sure everybody's wondering and interested in how you became a believer. At the end of high school, maybe right after, um, I moved away from my family. I was going through a lot of different stuff, and uh, one person I can always look up to is my stepbrother, and he was a uh, he's actually like a, a youth pastor at that time in my life, and he always had great advice for me and. Saw how happy he was, and I just started to make changes, and that's how I found God in my life. And you know, it's been an up and down battle. You know, obviously, it's not all you know gold paved roads and yeah. everything, but you know, it's it's definitely made my life a million times better. I listen to everything. You know, like I mean, I don't, I'm not really, I, I don't really don't care if they believe in God or not. Like I before I was a Christian, you know, I've been playing music all my life. Yeah, music has been like everything to me since I was a little kid you know like um, so I mean I, I felt if it's good writing or, or you know great poetry or whatever it is like to me it doesn't really bother me either way you know what the writer believes in or the artist or whatever so but growing I mean yeah growing up there's there's some Christian bands when I grew up but they're mostly like metal bands you know so and it was just kind of interesting to me at first to find the great line came out in 2006 and this has been the highest selling under oath album so far people that, that know Christ and people that don't know Christ what are you hearing from them I'm even the kids that don't I mean a lot of them are just like you know the lyrics to the song helped me with this or that or the other you know it's people everywhere I mean like even before I was a believer there were certain songs that helped me get through the day you know like I just feel just being real with people you know they, they can relate what kind of mindset do you need to be in before you go out and perform to an audience? It's definitely a long process. I mean, we, we definitely pray as a group and, you know, you got to get your mind focused on why you're doing this, you know? Like, I feel, you know, a lot of our dudes are married and, you know, sometimes people want to be at home with their families, but it's like, man, God calls people to do crazy things. Like, you know, people have, feel God calls them to move to Africa to build a church or whatever. It's like. The fact that we've been called to do this and you know how I don't know how long it's gonna last but like and the opportunity we've been given and the kids that we can speak to like God's calling us to do this now we gotta we gotta go we gotta do it now you know and like because maybe when we're 35 that won't be the case you know but I feel like it's getting in that mindset and just understanding to where this is where you need to be right now in this instant you know even if it's for one person you know you need to be there do you deal with issues of pride? No, we're uh, Under Oath's pretty pretty focused on that. We we understand that we're not cool or more important than anyone. So you know, we just feel like we've been very blessed, and our fans are incredible. You know, like you know, and they're all people. Everyone's the same. You know, like no one's cooler than anybody else. So it's just yeah, that's the mindset we've always had. How do you feel about where the world's going right now? The system. The world system. Uh, pretty downhill, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To find the great line, what are some of your favorite songs off the album? It's actually the first album we've ever written that I enjoy as a whole. Okay. I feel like from front to back, it's the way it's supposed to be, and I wouldn't change anything on it. Like, I can't say that about any other album we've ever recorded or anything I've done in the past with other bands or whatever it is. I feel like that record to me is. I wouldn't change a thing, you know, so I feel like there's a song for every mood on that record, depending on what mood I'm in is what song I like better. What inspired the album cover? We worked with this guy named Chandler Owen, and I had some story that I wrote out in one of my lyric books, and I just kind of shared it with him, and he kind of took it and ran with it. And uh, It turned out totally different than I expected it to, but that's cool because I wasn't the artist for that, you know, like I had the concept, but 
I wanted him to run with it, and I think it turned out beautifully. What does Define the Great Line mean to you personally? I came with that title because I feel like, as what we were talking about earlier, just life as a Christian or a non-Christian, hopefully, like you are on a path to become a better person. No matter what you believe in or where you came from, it doesn't matter, like who your parents are, how rich your family is. I feel like there's some sort of path everyone's on to become something better. Not as in like, I want to make more money or I want to be a famous movie star. I just feel like as a human, like, man, I wish I could love someone like that or I wish I could, you know, I wish I could treat people equally all the time, you know, like, and I feel like once you have that figured out, like, no matter how many times you mess up or you turn around, you go the other direction into the dark or you fall off, you, you, can, you can see it and, like, it's, like, here and, like, oh, man, I can grab onto it and pull myself up and keep going forward because there's only two ways you can go and it's forward and backwards and you're not going to just keep going straight, but it, if you have it figured out that, yeah, man, I do want to be a better person, then you know where you're going, and you know what your goal is, and you know where you're heading. Since you've been touring for almost two years to support this album, off and on, what have been some of the highlights of this tour? Oh, man. I mean, every tour has been amazing. You know, like, we're on our headlining tour right now. Um, I don't know when this airs, but it's going all through the U.S., and we get to pretty much play the entire new record and some old songs, and it's like, this is my favorite tour we've ever done, but... I mean, every tour we've done this record's been amazing. Warp tour and tour with Taking Back Sunday. It's all it's all been amazing. And the world tour we did. There's not one tour I would have changed or take back. What's the song in regards to myself about? Um, I was going through a lot of struggles for a while there. I like fell back into bad drug habits because that's how I was before I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. So when things in my life went bad. I hadn't had like really bad times since I was a Christian, so I kind of fell back into it. And while writing that record, I was getting out of it, and uh, like a lot of it was just me kind of sitting in front of the mirror and just talking about myself and why I can't just like change, you know. So that's pretty much what the whole record is from front to back: is me being a believer and being a strong person and knowing where I want to go, but having this demon that's just throwing me into the dirt and like dragging me around and I'm throughout the whole record I'm trying to get out of it and get out of it by the end I'm like because by the time we were done with the record I was sober again I was like this is the last song was just kind of like a hallelujah kind of yeah deal, so like I like I got through it so I'm trying yeah. time to celebrate yeah. yeah are you guys at work on a new record or new we songs? are yes we we're, we're getting close to halfway done writing it wow pretty much, so we work like as soon as we're out of the studio we're already writing again so um we'll be going to the studio in march so we'll have a new record out summer of 08. how do you think that this album is going to differ from to find the great line i think it's going to be even more of a progression you know like even more like we really really like to push ourselves like we've written a lot of stuff to where one dude can't play it or aaron is like man i still can't get that drum beat right man it's like Trying me, and I, I love that because that's how Define the Great Line was. And it's like, and once you write it and you and you master it, and like, you're like, man, I couldn't have done that two years ago. So, that's pretty much what the goal for every record is. And are you working with any special producers on this? Uh, we're going back to the same people that we went for Define the Great Line, just because it was. We've never had fun recording before, and it was like fun. It was comfortable. It was stress free. It was like. Man, this is how recording should be. Yeah, you know, like because every other record I've ever recorded in my life has been like, man, I'm so stressed out. I'm gonna kill somebody. Like, I'm going nuts. Like, get me out of here. And like this is recording with Adam is just like, it's like fun. It, and it's really weird to say that it's fun. You know, Spencer Chamberlain. It's been great talking yep, to you. Thank you. Blaring out with Eric Blair with Spencer Chamberlain of Underos signing off.